This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this lesson is on U substitution. We are looking for the antiderivative or integral of 5x times x squared plus 9 to the 14th. We are going to identify U, which in this case it's going to be x squared plus 9. Then taking the derivative with respect to x of U and the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus 9, we get du dx equals 2x. Our strategy is going to be to solve for dx. So multiplying in a sense both sides by dx, du is 2x dx, du divided by 2x is dx. So we're going to replace this dx with du divided by 2x. We're going to replace this x squared plus 9 with u. And we get 5x u to the 14th du over 2x. The good news is all of the x's go away. This x and this x divide out. 5 upstairs, 2 downstairs, that's 5 halves. The x's go away, u to the 14th du. We're only allowed to have one variable here, that's all we have. So the antiderivative of u to the 14th with respect to u would be u to the 15th over 15, or u to the 14 plus 1 over 14 plus 1. So we get 5 halves times u to the 15th over 15 plus c. 5 on top, 15 on the bottom would result in a 3 downstairs. 2 times 3 is a 6 downstairs. So we get u to the 15th over 6 plus c. But we cannot leave our final answer in terms of u. Replace it with the original u being x squared plus 9. So my final answer will be x squared plus 9 to the 15th over 6 plus c. Your final answer must be in terms of the original variable, not the u. Our next case is going to be the integral or antiderivative of 7x squared over the cube root of 2x cubed plus 1. This time we're going to let u equal 2x cubed plus 1. And the derivative of that looks a little bit like 7x squared. That's one condition that enables us to solve the problem. So if u is 2x cubed plus 1, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of both of those. The derivative with respect to x of u is du dx. The derivative with respect to x of 2x cubed is 6x squared. Then my goal is to solve for dx to substitute for the dx in the original problem. Multiplying both sides by dx, du is 6x squared dx, and then divide both sides by 6x squared, du divided by 6x squared is dx. That becomes dx, and 2x cubed plus 1 becomes u, and this x squared stays in the problem. But the good news, again, the x squareds divide out, and all the x's go away. I have a 7 upstairs and a 6 downstairs, so I'm going to pull out 7 sixths, and I have 1 over the cube root of u, du. But if we're going to use the power rule for antiderivatives, I need to express this as a power. 1 over the cube root of u is 1 over u to the 1 third power, which is the same as u to the negative third, negative 1 third. And then the antiderivative of x to the n is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. That will be u to the negative 1 third plus 1 over negative 1 third plus 1. Negative 1 third plus 1 is 2 thirds. So we'll get 7 6 u to the 2 thirds over 2 thirds plus c. Now dividing by 2 thirds, I have 7 6 We're dividing this by 2 thirds. That's the same thing as multiplying by 3 halves. So we get 7 6 times 3 halves times u to the 2 thirds plus c. How does this divide out? Divide the top by 3, divide the bottom by 3. That'll just leave me 1 upstairs, 2 downstairs, 2 times 2 is 4. 7 fourths u to the 2 thirds plus c. But what is u? It was 2x cubed plus 1. We, of course, rewrite the final answer in terms of x, not in terms of u, and we get 7 fourths, 2x cubed plus 1 to the 2 thirds plus c. Our next example is the antiderivative of e to the 7x. Remember, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. We will let u be the exponent, so u is going to equal 7x. Then let's take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. The derivative with respect to x of u is the derivative with respect to x of 7x. So du dx is 7. And our strategy is to solve for dx. So du is 7dx. Divide both sides by 7. du divided by 7 equals dx. So that's how that is going to substitute. e to the 7x will become e to the u. dx will become du divided by 7. Now du over 7 is really 1 7th times du, so we can pull the 1 7th constant out in front of the antiderivative, or integral sign. 
So we get 1 7th times the integral or antiderivative of e to the u du. But again, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. So the antiderivative of e to the u du would be e to the u plus c. But what is u? u is 7x. So our final answer will be 1 7th times e to the 7x plus c. Our next question is the antiderivative of 1 over 3x plus 8. Let u equal 3x plus 8. Take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Derivative with respect to x of u is the derivative with respect to x of 3x plus 8. So we get du dx is 3. Our strategy is to solve for dx. So in a sense, multiply both sides by dx and then divide by 3. So du divided by 3 will substitute for dx. 3x plus 8 will become u. So this problem now is antiderivative of 1 over u times du over 3. But du over 3 is really 1 third times du. That is a constant that can come out in front of the integral or antiderivative sign. So we get 1 third times the integral of 1 over u du. Now what do we know? We know the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So the integral of 1 over x is log absolute x plus c. The integral of 1 over u will be log natural log absolute u plus c. But we can't leave u in our final answer. We'll go ahead and make the substitution. What is u? u is 3x plus 8. So we get 1 third natural log absolute value of 3x plus 8 plus c. Let's take a look at this question. We have the integral or antiderivative of x over x minus 7 dx. This time we're going to let u equal x minus 7. And take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. The derivative with respect to x of u is the derivative with respect to x of x minus 7. The derivative with respect to x of u is du dx. The derivative with respect to x of x minus 7 is just 1. And our usual strategy is to go ahead and substitute for dx. So multiplying both sides by dx, we get du is dx. So what will our substitution scheme look like? Antiderivative of x, x minus 7 is u, and dx is du. But we have a problem here. The issue is that there are two variables. There's both an x and a u here, and that is not workable for us. We have to only have one variable, only u, after the u substitution. So is there some way for us to turn this x into a u? And if we look at this first line here, u is x minus 7, we'll see there is certainly a way for us to do that. Namely, adding 7 to both sides, we'll get u plus 7 equals x. So making that substitution, instead of x, we'll take u plus 7. So we have the antiderivative of u plus 7 over u du. Now to do this, we have a common denominator. Let's break this up into u over u plus 7 over u du. But u over u is just 1. So we get the antiderivative of 1 plus 7 over u du. So a sum of two functions. The antiderivative of the sum is the sum of the antiderivatives. So we'll take the antiderivative of 1 du plus the antiderivative of 7 over u du. Think of a function whose derivative is 1 with respect to the variable u. Well, the derivative with respect to x of x is 1. The derivative with respect to u of u is 1. So the antiderivative of 1 is just u. And then this, of course, is 7 times 1 over u. So we can pull the 7 out and make it 7 times the antiderivative of 1 over u du. But the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. But what is u? u is x minus 7. So replace x minus 7 with this u. Replace x minus 7 with that u. And that looks like it could be the final answer. But there's one small thing we can do to make this a little bit better. c is any arbitrary constant. Negative 7 is a constant. If I take negative 7 plus an arbitrary constant, I still just get a constant. In a sense, this negative 7 gets absorbed into the arbitrary constant. So to write this in a little cleaner way, we will say 
that the answer is x plus 7 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 7 plus a slightly smaller c because we had an arbitrary c here we subtract 7 it's still an arbitrary c and that will conclude this lesson